called truly the appearance of Buddhas in the world is rare. The Blessed One will not give women a chance to be initiated and ordained into his order and to become nuns. It would be good, Ananda, if you were to go to the Blessed One so as to obtain permission for women to be initiated and ordained. That would be good, Gautami, agreed Ananda. So Ananda went to, the, went to the Buddha and posed the following question. Next. Okay, um, the, the, Ananda asked the Buddha, Blessed One, the four fruits of monastic life, namely the fruit of a stream winner, the fruit of a once-returner, the fruit of a non-returner, and the highest fruit of arahanship, can a woman who is earnest and zealous, uh, who dwells in seclusion, realize any of this? That was the question posed by Ananda. In other words, can women become enlightened and receive the fruits of practice if they were uh, allowed full ordination? And the Buddha say yes. And then, uh, well then, this is the Ananda's response after the Buddha say yes. Well then, the, the Venerable Ananda said to the Blessed One, Sin, Blessed One, enlightened Buddhas of the past had four assemblies, namely monks, nuns, laymen, and laywomen. And since women who are earnest and zealous and who dwell in seclusion are able to realize the four fruits of the monastic life, namely the fruit of stream winner up to the highest fruit of arahanship, it would be good if the Blessed One were to allow women to be initiated in this order and be ordained as nuns. Next. Moreover, Mahapachapati Gautami performed some difficult tasks for the Blessed One. She nourished, fed, and suckled him as after his mother had passed away. And for this, the Blessed One is grateful and cognizant. Finally, after these reasonings by uh, Ananda on part of Mahapachapati Gautami, the, the Buddha finally agreed to allow ordination for women. It is interesting to note that uh, in the Thai version of these events, the beginning of this sutta is slightly different. It tells the story of the death of Mahapachapati's royal husband, the ordination of her own son, the ordination of the Buddha's son, as well as the ordination of sons and husbands of many members of the royal household of the Buddha when he paid them visit soon after his, a few years after his enlightenment. This narration is posited as some sort of psychological explanation for Mahapachapati's desire to be ordained a bhikkhuni. She did not wish to face being a widow. Second, even if we agree that the motivation of Mahapachapati is fear or avoidance of widowhood, we could still appreciate her bold requests and daring actions in negotiating with the Buddhas for, with the Buddha's permission for full ordination for women. When we compare Mahapachapati to Masi, we can see that while Masi invokes the possibility of setting up a fire and jumping, and jumping into it as a leverage to preclude possible denial from Vesantara, Mahapachapati's move was to initiate a process of what I would call symbolic self-ordination of the Sakaya women. These steps initiated and conducted by Mahapachapati and the Sakayan women can be seen as a rather bold move of crossing the traditional boundaries of women in the family. These women are, not, are cutting not only their hair, but also their traditional ties in some, to some extent, and their roles within the domestic sphere and conduct themselves in the manner of nuns and into the spiritual sphere. This was done even when, at that moment, they were not yet permitted by the Buddha. They were utilizing the symbolic ritual of ordination to express their determination. Mahapachapati does not confront the Buddha, but she leads the Sakayavan women to symbolically enter into ordination by themselves. They were stepping into another status, which lies beyond the room of the household life for women. They wonder wherever the Buddha and his party go. I see these steps initiated by Mahapachapati as indicating a bold and progressive move for women. These actions are progressive in the sense that these symbolic actions are probably unprecedented, but needs, need further research to confirm. They are moving forward to the goal of full ordination. They, these moves are proposing to the Buddha to look and see their determination and their good reasonings for doing so. 
Third, it is interesting to know that Mahapachapati and Ananda were utilizing three different types of arguments to seek full ordination for women. First, it has been a tradition of all past Buddhas to have instituted the four assemblies composing of male monks, female monks, male laity, and female laity. Second, the Buddha confirms that when women practice the Dharma, uh, receive full ordination, they can achieve enlightenment. This means that the spiritual potential for women is equal to that of men. Third, Ananda utilizes the sense of gratitude the Buddha owed his aunt and foster mother who suckled him as a child. It could be argued that he has used uh, Mahapachapati, uh, you know, Ananda on behalf of Mahapachapati has used traditional values to ask for new spiritual choice for women. Ananda on Mahapachapati's behalf was soliciting the compassion of the Buddha out of his gratitude for his aunt and foster mother. Motherhood was invoked to provide full ordination for women. Concluding remarks. From our reading of the events as these very these two decisive moments in the lives of two great Buddhist women, Masi and Mahapachapati, we could detect some repeated cultural patterns of contentions. First, the question of gratitude, one between husband and wife, and the other between foster mother and child. A deep sense of gratitude is expressed by Masi in expressing her wish to follow Vesantara into the forest. On the other hand, Mahapachapati, with the help of Ananda, invokes the Buddha's deep indebtedness to his aunt mother to allow her fervent wish to be fully ordained. His gratitude towards her <clears throat> leads, helped leads the Buddhas to show compassion for grant, to grant her wish to be ordained. Second, the dilemma of widowhood in ancient Hindu society. <clears throat> Both Masi and Pachapati were facing imminent widowhood. Both women decided to follow the men into the wilderness. <clears throat> Even when the men are leaving behind a world of culture and tradition, the women decide to leave this, tradi uh, this tradition and culture as well. Although Masi will be performing her role as a wife in the forest, and Mahapachapati will be granted full ordination, and thus leaving the household life, we can still see the structural condition of these two great Buddhist women, that what kind of uh, uh, condition they have to operate in. Lastly, both women show very strong determination in their negotiating process, one defending her traditional role and the other using her traditional role as a foster mother to negotiate for full ordination for women. The crossing of boundaries by Mahapachapati set in motion a long history of the establishment, the prosperity, the decline, and the recent revival of the Pikuni lineage in the Theravada Buddhist history. Many Buddhist women in Thailand and beyond are learning from these two great women the integrate labyrinth of negotiating their desired roles as wife and mother and or as fully ordained Pikuni. So we can say that both options are crucial in the life choices of Buddhist women then, some 2,500 years ago, and now in the second decade of the 21st century. Thank you for your kind attention. May it please your Royal Highness.